Man spots a creature in lake, then realizes that he have to act fast. Most fishermen get a thrill when they throw their line in the water in the sheer hope that they'll reel in a big fish. Others simply do it to escape from the stress of everyday city life. Before the video starts, please make sure to subscribe and activate the notification bell to never miss our amazing stories. Brad Mac's day started out calm, which is what he wanted. The water beneath him was serene, and he wanted to relish each moment of his alone time and, of course, focus on fishing. But then, he saw a large brown shape out of the corner of his eyes. It was floating in his direction, but Mech assumed that it was a branch, so he didn't give it a second thought. Then, the unusual shape got closer, and it was about to mess with his perfect day. He finally saw what it was, and it certainly wasn't a branch. He felt a sudden chill at the sight of it. He needed to escape, and fast. Mech took off from his home in Pennsylvania one morning in May. He was headed to race down lake to enjoy sun fishing, some silence, and some sun. It had been a tough week at work, and he was really looking forward to this getaway in order to distress. By the time this day was over, Mech would have an encounter he would likely never forget. Mech lived in Everett, Pennsylvania. It was a small town with a lot of history, but it's mainly known for its breathtaking surroundings. There are tons of mountains in the valley of the Allegheny Mountains. It's what gives this town its everlasting presence. Everett is also known for having a massive lake that's surrounded by wildlife and trees. People often came here with their boats, which they used in the lake. He initially considered spending most of the day on the water, but he could have never foreseen what happened next. Meg grabbed his fishing gear and some lunch. Once he was on the boat, he cast the fishing line. With the sun on his back, Meg got comfortable and gave his feet a rest. Then he saw the long log in the water. Meg took his sunglasses off when he saw that the log was heading towards him. He got nervous as it continued to approach, and it was coming rapidly. He grabbed his paddle and took a look around the lake to see if he could figure out what that thing was. Was it really a log? There was no way the log was caught in a current. The lake was too quiet, and without a current, there couldn't be movement. Mech kept the mysterious object in his sight, but he was growing nervous. It got closer to his boat with each passing second. Something about this situation had put Mech on alert, but what was it? Mech wasn't sure what was coming towards him. He was alone in the water, and this scared him. Then, he noticed the log had fur, and lots of it too. Mech assumed it was some kind of rodent or possibly even a beaver. His body started to relax as he realized that he was no longer in any kind of danger, but he hadn't realized that he probably should have kept his guard up for a little while longer that day. Mech was fully aware it wasn't a log. He was initially startled, so he stood up. Unfortunately, this caused his boat to rock, but he was able to keep his balance. Then, he took a closer look. That's when the boat started to shake and he realized he was in trouble. He crouched down and held onto the boat for dear life. This kept the boat secured. He had a chilling feeling that spread from the top of his head all the way down to his toes. This was not the relaxing day he had in mind. And if that wasn't bad enough, the animal was heading towards his boat even quicker now. What on earth could it have wanted? And could he be absolutely certain it was a beaver? Mech and the animal paddled towards each other, and that's when Mech saw that the creature was an infant and it was barely able to stay afloat. The animal was on the log, but it had lost its grip and detached itself. It was struggling to keep his head above water. Mech knew he had to help it somehow. This tiny beaver was exhausted from paddling so much. That's when Mech decided to dive towards the animal, but he didn't check one fact and that was a huge mistake. Mech was now very much aware that it wasn't a log, but rather a creature in distress. But the animal was too far from his reach, so he decided to try and paddle closer towards it. He was determined to ensure that no living creature suffered while he was in the vicinity. He knew he could help this little guy. So, once he got close enough, he reached out as far as his arms would stretch and grabbed onto the creature. He hadn't realized that this was no log, but it sure wasn't a beaver either. So the question remained, what was it really? Mech pulled the creature out of the water the moment he had a good grip on it. Then, he put it down on the base of his boat. It suddenly dawned on him that this was a baby cub, and since it was a newborn, it was also weak and tiny. To make things worse, the cub had consumed too much water and was having a tough time breathing. Mech knew he had to do something to keep it from choking. He had to come up with a solution for this cub, but what could he do? Mech was anxious at first because he was afraid the cub would bite him. He was also worried that its mom might be lurking nearby. So as the cub sneezed and released the water in its lungs, Mech kept an eye out for its mother near the shore. Mech assumed that the cub's mother was about 10 times bigger than its offspring, and his calculations were probably right. Mech grabbed his backpack, which was next to the cub, and called for help. He knew that having a bear this close, even a baby one, could be life-threatening. 
As he dug into his backpack pockets, he wondered whether the cops and wildlife rescue team would arrive in time. As it turns out, neither would get there because his phone had no service. So he had no way of calling for help. Mech only had one option and he wasn't exactly pleased with the idea. Then a plan popped into Mech's head. It was the only plan he had, and he knew time was of the essence. Mech paddled towards the shore where the cup was headed before Mech's boat intercepted him. He figured that the mother was probably in that vicinity. Once he got to shore, Mech grabbed the cup, but then he felt uneasy again, and then he saw something in the distance that gave him pause for concern. The trees produced intimidating shadows on the ground, and the bushes made eerie sounds as the winds picked up. Mech mistook the noises and the images as the cub's mother, but it didn't stop him from grabbing the cub so he could place it on the ground. But as soon as Mech reached for it, the cub did something that shocked him. Mech realized that the cub wouldn't bite him. It was too calm and motionless, but that didn't stop him from worrying about it. What if its mother didn't return for it? Meanwhile, the cub grew stronger as it realized that it had made it to the shore after all. Now there was only one thing left for Mech to do for the little guy. Mech allowed it to make its way back into the forest. Unfortunately, its mother was nowhere in sight. Mech took out his phone so he could videotape the cub as it walked away. The cub walked deeper into the woods, then it stopped to look back at Mech. It was also as if it was saying thanks to the human who rescued him. Once the cub was gone, Mech headed back to his boat. Along the way, he thought about the big risk he took when tried to save the cub's life. He also thought about what might have happened to it if he hadn't gone fishing that day. The following day, Mech spoke to the News and Rescue Committee. He hoped that someone would be able to tell him if the cub was still okay on its own. Then he got word that a mother bear and its cub were reported by hikers. Mech realized that the cub he saved had found its mother, but Mech was the one who lucked out. If the cub's mother had seen him with her cub, it would have likely retaliated against him. A bear's presence can have unexpected and dangerous results. The outcome can be grim if a human goes anywhere near a bear's offspring. Animal experts and rescue committees urge people never to handle wild animals. It's sound advice. One should never assume that the animal is alone in the wild. But in this instance, the cub was about to drown, so Mech's good deed was definitely applauded. His quick thinking saved the cub's life. Mech didn't get the calm, peaceful day he had planned. But regardless of the outcome, he's glad he was in the right place at the right time. Next time, Mech might want to consider inviting a fishing buddy to join him in case he gets into a fight with a bear mother. The cup was the only catch that Mech made that day, and while the experience was rewarding, he won't likely want to have this happen again. If you ever have any doubts on what to do when you run into a wild animal, the Pennsylvania Game Commission suggests you reach out to the nearest local authorities. The relationship between bears and humans dates back tens of thousands of years, during which time we have competed with bears for shelter and food. Our strong link with bears is attested to by the Neanderthal burial of Lorigordu in France, where the skeleton of a Neanderthal in a fetal position was found under a funeral slab surrounded by the bones of a brown bear. Bears were also represented in rock paintings in caves inhabited by our ancestors in Europe. The bears depicted by our ancestors were cave bears, which roamed Eurasia until about 24,000 years ago, when it became extinct during the last glacial maximum. Recently, gene flow between extinct cave bears and brown bears has been discovered, providing direct evidence for ancestral hybridization between the two species, which resulted in the modern Ursus arctos that we all know. In human culture, bears also represent an important figure in Native American mythologies and play a major role in several religious ceremonies. Bears have also influenced the culture of many tribes in Asia. In fact, they are important animals for some tribes in Siberia. For example, the Ainu people in Japan consider the bear as the spirit of the mountains. In Russia, at a Fatyanovo cultural site dated to around 1500 BC, necklaces made with bear teeth were found. Several bear claws with bronze mounting, dated between the 9th and 11th centuries, were also discovered among the Finno-Ugrian group in the Urals that venerated the bear as a symbol of heroism. The images of bears in popular culture have helped them become icons that most people know and love. The most famous example is the teddy bear, which has been one of the most popular stuffed animals since the early 1900s and continues to be a favorite with children. More recently, Baloo from the Jungle Book, Winnie the Pooh, Yogi, and Boo Boo, and Masha, and the bear tell us that the strong link between people and bears, which started more than 80,000 years ago, continues nowadays. We hope that readers will enjoy this book at least as much as we have enjoyed its long preparation in our close collaboration with chapter contributors, and that the huge effort made by all the authors will be appreciated not just by the scientific community, but also by a wider audience. Being in a bear country captivates our minds and, at the same time, offers a lesson in humility by giving us the feeling that something more powerful than us is out there.
That was it for today's story. Let us know below in the comments if you enjoyed this incredible story. If yes, leave us a like and see you in the next video.